John here, and today we're going to do a review. Uh, this is actually a paid request uh, from Kevin. Uh, thank you to Kevin for that. He wanted me to talk about and review The Mask uh, from 1994, which stars Jim Carrey, Cameron Diaz, and directed by Chuck Russell. Uh, so let's talk about The Mask. When it comes to The Mask here, uh, it's one of the first Jim Carrey movies that I remember seeing. Uh, way back when, I had this babysitter, Michelle, and I haven't seen her in many years. Uh, but back then, and she probably still is, a big Jim Carrey fan. And she had this on VHS. And now I'm trying to think what year this was. It was definitely mid to late 90s. Uh, probably when this came out on tape. Um, but she had the tape of this. And she would play this movie over and over again. <laughs> And I just remember that, you know, like I remember it vividly, her replaying the VHS of The Mask. I mean, who knows, you know, she may have taped it off of TV. Um, but, you know, she was a big Jim Carrey fan. And yeah, so this is one of the first Jim Carrey movies that I remember seeing. I saw this way before, you know, other films he did, whether it be Dumb and Dumber, or, you know, uh, The Cable Guy, Batman Forever. You know, a liar, liar. Uh, so when it comes to The Mask, you know, it's one of my favorite Jim Carrey movies. Uh, but, you know, when you look back at that year, you know, 1994, which I think this came out in the summer, the, July of 94. But not only did you have The Mask that came out that year, you also had Ace Ventura, Peck Detective, and Dumb and Dumber. All three movies were big hits. And, you know, what a stellar year for Jim Carrey. And, you know, he's launched and to stardom. And also, too, here with this movie, it's the debut of Cameron Diaz. This is Cameron Diaz's first movie. And after this, you know, she would become a star. She would, you know, be in other movies afterwards. You know, uh, there's something about Mary. You know, Charlie's Angels, which I like. I have fun with that movie. Nowadays, you don't really see her as much. Uh, and I think she's pretty much retired. But I heard, or I thought she was doing another film. Uh, a film with uh, Jamie Foxx. Um, I don't know what's going on there. But I would love to see, you know, Cameron Diaz more. You know, like more in films now. Uh, but... Uh, she kind of, for a while there, you know, walked away and more power to her. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, the mask here, you know, definitely left an impression, you know, as far as, you know, being the first like Jim Carrey film that I remember just watching back in the day. But, you know, it's based on the Dark Horse comics, which I haven't read. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the comics. Uh, what I know of the character is that it's a lot darker. Uh, it's more like in the style of Deadpool where, you know, there's a lot of violence and stuff and it's very dark and uh, a lot of uh, fourth wall, uh, you know, quips and, you know, jokes. And again, you know, I haven't read the comics and I'm not too familiar with the source material, but they are a lot darker than what, you know, the film is about uh you know we're here it's a straight like it's a comedy but it definitely feels like a live action cartoon and you know we'll talk more about that and so much other stuff here uh, but let's get into the plot real quick so you know stanley ibicus our main character in the film played by jim carrey you know he's his banker and he's kind of you know a down on his luck type of character uh, you know, very mild-mannered, uh, kind of a meek character. And, you know, one night he finds this supernatural mask in the river and he becomes a supernatural alter ego, you know, which you see here. And it captures the attention of Cameron Diaz's character, Tina, who's this nightclub singer. Uh, you know, she's a singer of a nightclub and... You also have this uh, crime boss, you know, played by Peter Green, uh, who wants to, you know, go after the mask 
for stealing his money and this and that. And that's kind of the plot here to the film. But, you know, Jim Carrey does a great job here. Very likable as Stanley Ipkiss. And you can't help but root for the character. You know, again, he's a nice guy, very mild-mannered. And when he becomes the mask, you know, he transforms into this, you know, very suave, energetic alter ego. And, you know, again, he captures the attention of, you know, Cameron Diaz. And, you know, Cameron Diaz is a bombshell in the film. You know, she's smoking hot. Uh, and she does a great job. You know, Peter Green as... Uh, why, Darian? Why am I forgetting the name? They you are know, like Dorian. There you go, Dorian. It's Dorian, yeah. Peter Green does a great job as our villain here. And he would go on to be more villain types in other movies. You know, he was a villain in Under Siege too, I believe. Um, but, you know, he would, again, go on to be in other movies where he's the villain. Uh, he was the villain. Who's that? Maybe it was Peter Green. Maybe Dorian wants his money back. <laughs> but, yeah, Peter Green, like I said, he would go on to be other, you know, play other villain types. Uh, Richard Jenny, who's a friend of Stanley Ibkiss in the movie, you know, they work at the bank together. Unfortunately, he's passed away. Uh, Amy Yazback, you know, she's this girl in the film that, you know, is trying to, you know, get to know Jim Carrey and do a report you know, uh, on, you know, Stanley Ipkiss. And you know, I think in real life, she was married to John Ritter. Uh, but, you know, she does a fine job in the movie. I don't know if really her character, looking back, if she was really needed in the film. Uh, you know, she was fine, but I don't know if she was really needed here. Like, I don't know what the purpose or, you know, of her character was. Um, you also have Peter Rygert, who is uh, Callaway, the sergeant in the film that is, you know, after Stanley Ipkiss. And in fact, I think that character is in the comics. Uh, you know, I believe he's in the comics, that character of Callaway or Callaway. But yeah, Peter Rygert, I remember, I just saw him in Oscar, the Stallone comedy uh, that came out in 91. You know, he was in that movie, and I remember seeing him in that movie. And you also have Ben Stein in here in a small cameo, which is a fun bit. Um, I talk about the mask as a metaphor. <laughs> you know, you're suffering from mild delusion. <laughs> yeah, that, that part always makes me laugh, but yeah, Ben Stein, it's always great to see him in that, like in a role or any type of appearance. But it's a really good cast here. But the film is directed by Chunk Russell, and before directing this he directed elm street 3 he directed the blob remake uh after this he would direct the eraser with arnold uh he directed the scorpion king which i don't mind the scorpion king and i think he's still directing now but from what i've heard about his recent stuff that it's not too good but yeah back in the day chuck russell directed some great stuff and he brings you know very enjoyable direction here you know, developing these characters, you know, the look of Edge City and the tone of the movie. Uh, and again, I really, you know, applaud Chuck Russell here and, you know, the script and, you know, the visuals by ILM. Uh, to me, you know, for a film that's almost 30 years old, you know, to me, the visuals still hold up. And... You know, just a year before, I think, yeah, ILM worked on Jurassic Park, and they would go on to work on many other films, uh, providing the visuals. And, you know, the visuals here in the film, you know, when the mask would transform into, like, different characters, you know, especially in the Coco Bongo scenes, uh, those were a lot of fun to watch. And, again, they for me, they still hold up. And uh, it, it feels like a live-action cartoon, you know, when the mask would transform into different stuff or, you know, the roadkill bit or, you know, the scene where the landlord is, you know, shooting him with a shotgun and he's bouncing around the apartment. 
Yeah, that's fun stuff. And you know, and then later on you would see more of that, like in the third act of the movie, you know, where you know he eats the dynamite and and all that good stuff. And even like the look of you know the mask when Peter Green puts on the mask and he transforms into that you know hideous face and yeah I thought the makeup on that was really good so really good makeup you know uh, on the the look of the character yeah I would like to know how long it took to apply the makeup uh, but yes yeah, so a really good makeup too makeup effects you know with the mask and then later on when you have the villain wear the mask uh, so the visual effects again to me still holds up and the makeup effects and I know when it comes to this movie there's always been that uh, question of should they have done a sequel back in the day and I'm not talking about Son of the Mask which I've never seen and I have no desire to see but you know the way it ends I mean it would have been interesting to see you know uh, another film you know like maybe you could have made it two or three years after the film. Uh, now, uh, not really. I mean, I know it wasn't too long ago they were talking about doing a sequel, but I just think that Jim Carrey is just happy being retired and you know staying out of the uh, spotlight. Uh, I would say more back then um, because I look at Dumb and Dumber 2 and I don't want a repeat of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it would have been interesting to see back in the day and, you know, maybe they could have uh, followed, you know, the source material, like they could have made it more violent, more darker, more, you know, insane, what have you. But yeah, so overall, The Mask, you know, it's a very entertaining 90s movie. Jim Carrey, uh, you know, just it really shows the talents of Jim Carrey here. Cameron Diaz is hot and what a debut from you know from Cameron Diaz. You know the visual effects still hold up for me. Great score by Randy Edelman. Chuck Russell brings enjoyable direction here. And yeah, so The Mask, it's a great one in my book. And you know out of five stars, I'm gonna give this uh four and a half stars. Uh so yeah, it's definitely up there. It's as far as like a favorite. Uh, but that's it for now. Thank you for watching. And stay tuned for more.